again, and we have this new ship, the Diana, that I want to show off. It's a frigate, and I'm going to be joining up with Mark Bonney on his way down to Mortimer. Ahoy, ahoy. There he is. Uh, and we were just talking about the ship called the Third Rate. If you go into ships here, you can build a Third Rate. That is the name of the ship. It is also, in fact, a Third Rate ship. It's a very dumb name. It managed to confuse me into believing that sometimes the game hid the name of the ship from you because I clicked on something off off in the distance and all it said was third rate. Huh, what is this mystery ship? I mean, that's a reasonable belief, right? Like, It would not have occurred to me to look through the ship catalog at port to find the third rate. Uh, what sort of upgrades do I want to put on this, Diana? Uh, I want both so I... ones. So mm, I ended up going with Sabaku Sabaku, um, for lack of a better choice, basically. I think that's a pretty good choice, generally. Sabaku is a good all-round wood. Like, it's not particularly strong in anything, but, um, you know, no penalties, which is nice, so. Um, this might be a good time to do a 101 level intro on what the various upgrades like that actually mean. That's actually not a bad idea. Um, oh, I could put floating battery on it, that would be great. It would never move again. Um, so, like, do you mean in terms of what these sorts of actual bonuses might do? Well, the difference between a uh, hull upgrade and the planking upgrades, for example, as well. Mm, yeah, so, uh, as I understand it, uh, when you build a ship, you've got your structure and you've got your, um, planking, and the planking is pretty much what the armor is on the sides and the bow and the stern, like, it affects those bits of stats, and the structure affects the actual thing down the middle that you'll, you know, sink if you lose. Um, <clears throat> that said... Oh, yeah, let's go for some weighted gunpowder on it. Um, <clears throat> that said, the uh, um, effect of different woods on structure and on planking is different. Like, there's a whole set of things that they'll affect no matter what. Um, but uh, the planking will... Um, Pittstown is neutral right now. Not neutral, but open to all. Um, you know, uh, teak planking will affect your, like, chance of leaks and, like, uh, you know, chance of fire differently than teak structure will. So this, right here, is the Diana. It is apparently based on a Spanish frigate. There have been a lot of ships named the Diana, so I couldn't find the exact one, but I hear that rumor. Um, and look at that. Beautiful. You've got courses, topsails, to gallants, and royals. I always like that fourth extra sail up there. Three jibs, three mizzen, and three main staysails. Very nice. Almost running directly with the wind here. It's very beautiful. I'll bring it down to Mortimer and meet up with you there, Bonnie, and you can take a look. I'll be ducking into port briefly. I don't entirely fancy going out to hunt with a hold full of iron ore. Yeah, that's probably for the best. You know, I don't know to what extent uh, cargo will uh, slow you down, but I think... I'm not worried about that aspect. I'm worried about the hundred gold that I have invested in it. Oh, yeah, that for sure. Like, don't lose your cargo by hunting with it. But I think that cargo actually does slow you down, which makes it a little bit easier to lose, you know? It wouldn't surprise me. It's the sort of thing that the developers seem likely to model. So is it actually reasonable to think about ships in terms of a generic frame onto which somewhat modular um, armor and decking is actually added? Does Not that have any bearing on quite. how ships are constructed in this era? Um, so ships in this era, like, remember, everything is handmade. Top to bottom, everything is handmade. Sure, and the game simulates a lot of that by just having small random variations from ship to ship. Right. It doesn't have enough of them, really, but um, generally, like, every ship that would come out uh, of a shipyard would be a little bit different. It would handle its own particular way, its captain would put particular things on it. Um, so, I guess it's like a reasonable simplification to do, okay, here's the frame, here's the planking. Um... But, like, a ship in this period would be its own thing. And I get that the developers can't, like, you know, 
model every ship as a complete special and unique one but that does seem like it will be a little bit extra <laughs> um, i mean you talk about that a little bit not terribly long ago in as much as it used to be a, re a reasonable thing to do to actually memorize the performance characteristics of ships you were likely to run into so that you could identify them and predict them in battle mm -hmm. between uh captain perks ship knowledge uh the permanent upgrade slots the uh fact that number of permanent upgrade slots can vary depending on construction quality uh the random thing you can get on top of structure and planking sometimes that'll tweak it just a bit more between all of those they do a decent job actually of making every ship special and unique um like but there's no way in hell's hide name i can possibly memorize all the ships i'm likely to run into right let alone exactly the ones which are generated on the spot and there are plenty of oh. ships in the game, too, as they keep adding things like this new Diana. I took a bath on that orb, but never mind. Look at that bow figure. That is Diana. The Huntress. All right, shall I pick up some missions while I'm out here, or have you got that lined up? Uh, what rate missions are you looking at? Because this is a fifth rate, this frigate. So I'd have to switch into my pickle if you need something smaller. If you don't mind me coming along under Rattlesnake Heavy, we can probably do fifths. Um, if you want to take a fifth-rate mission, and I will tank it, as it were, I am totally good with that. I'm just rounding Salina now, so I'll be there as soon as I can. The wind is very much with me, because, of course, I got the good wind DLC. <laughs> um, Lucky you, when I came through that way, I had to fight the wind the whole way. I actually, I took a trip up from Mortimer to Pitt recently, and I just left the harbor and sort of stayed there until the wind was in the right quarter. I mean, luckily it was like, you know, okay, in 10 minutes it'll be in the right quarter. It was just like, let me just sit here and fish for a bit. Um, so I didn't want to be caught with, you know, struggling against the wind. So I have a mission lined up that's maybe a mile or two due north of Mortimer. Just about halfway between Mortimer and that tiny island to the north, northeast. Cool. So I will meet you in that part of the world. Let's group up. Ah, you rejected the invite. I didn't even see the invite. Well, so there. And now I won't. The loading screen. Yeah, I'll wait a moment. All right, I should be clear here. Um, but yeah, I mean, they would talk about, like, you know, a such-and-such -such class ship, um, like, named after the sort of first instance of that model that was made um mm -hmm. and uh every ship in that family would be just a little bit different handled just a little bit different um and you know the stresses and repairs that the ship would undergo over its lifetime would also change it so like you know if you've had to you know uh fish your yards or whatever uh just uh to like uh repair them at sea um they'll you know be handling differently and then you get into port and you get to have a a better set of repairs on them and depends on what wood's available and you get you know some piece of wood to replace some spar and now your ship handles differently but if they can't add ship names because air quotes uh they can't support distinct names on every ship on the server then I don't think they're Those gonna... are quite the air quotes, having seen some of the games that have per ship naming. I know. I think it really has to do with uh, people will name their ships crude things, and we don't want them to. Yeah, there's an element of that, and there's probably an element of identifiability. Frankly, I actually yeah. do like that the game identifies them by class rather than by individual name. Yeah. Though you'll note that when you click on an enemy player, it just says enemy player, and it's up to you mm, to actually true. identify the ship. Um towards which end i have been writing up a document of the sail plans of all of the ships and i want to add it uh add to it information on their decks and on their painting even though you can change painting i've just never seen the paint upgrades actually um it'll at least help in most cases to identify a ship at distance uh yesterday i was out with uh, mortis in a pair of uh ships of the line um a Bologna and a St. Pavel, and uh, we spotted a Prussian sailing down by Ragged Key, and we chased him, but he made it into the shallows because he was in a much smaller ship than we were, and we couldn't, couldn't uh, maintain pursuit. 
but it was interesting to try and identify him. I would say that would hardly be a fair fight had you caught him. Oh no, it would have been a brutally unfair fight, but you know. <laughs> That's uh, what total war between the pirate and Prussian nations looks like, I suppose. I really like this Diana. It looks really nice. I hear it doesn't actually uh, handle so well, that they're a little bit glass cannony, but we'll see. Well, fortunately, the AI ships aren't terribly good at uh, dealing with The AI with... is suicidally dumb. It's true. Yes. Excellent aim, and very good at the game in other <laughs> ways, but not a great planner. No, no. Um, I'm beating slowly to windward here. Yeah, I'm running um, with the wind. It's great. I am coming at this from the wrong end. I'm looking at a St. Pavel through my telescope right now, an AI St. Pavel. Such a beautiful second rate. Pretty simple sail plan. Big topsails there. Um, I can't actually see the combat mission, so I'm probably just going to meet up with you and then follow you back upwind. That, that seems reasonable. Yeah. Um, I don't see you on the horizon anywhere. I believe you're coming from Pitt, correct? Yeah, yeah. I just see the mountains of Inagua. He could smell the flowers of Bermuda oh. in the gale. I completely by accident managed to beat towards the combat marker in exactly one turn. Nice. Um, it's a fifth rate mission, you said? Yes, it is. Good. Difficulty labeled plunderer if you're a pirate. Mm -hmm. There's a Prussian enemy player nearby, which is a little bit concerning. Ooh, they will sometimes lurk waiting for someone to come out of a combat mission. Um, yeah, when I'm going to watch and see what they do. I have enough leeway to turn and flee if I need to. They I... are definitely sailing towards me. Can you get into the sea I'm going to break this off. Yeah, get into the sea, because uh, then you can't be attacked. I uh, may not have that option. Well, we'll see. Alright. I'm making my way towards you as best I can. Yep, I am definitely being hunted, sir. <laughs> Do you know what ship they're in? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not quite good enough at identifying it. I will count off the mass for you if I can ever get a profile of it again. But That's currently, fine. I'm looking at them bow on. No uh, worries, I believe then. a two-master. Well, then, if I can join you... That will be to our advantage. Um, it's also not uncommon for Prussians to use smaller ships to tag and then bring in the big guns once you're bogged down. Why, if I didn't know better, I'd say it's another Rattlesnake Heavy. Oh. The sail plan's very similar, although I don't think quite the same. Rattlesnake Heavy has three masts. Well, there seems to be a very short aft mast, which I couldn't see from my earlier perspective. Mizzen. Oh, I see them. Ah, you can see me. You can see them running ahead of, running behind me. Yep. Uh, do you want me to bait them into attacking me? No, it's okay. They are in... Yep, that's three masts. That looks... They're breaking for you, sir. <laughs> are they? Well, they're breaking off for me anyways. I can't quite tell. Oh, <laughs> I've, we have company. Skittles? There's another pirate out here with me. Yeah. No Skittles. Yeah, I'm just going to salute them. If you um, come to a stop, you're actually just barely between me and the combat order. Cool. Um, what's Skittles in? I have the foggiest bloody idea where I've ended up here. Oh, what do you mean? You're just up from Mortimer. Yeah, no, I just lost track of where I was in the process of oh, I getting away from the yeah. oncoming Prussians. Now I feel slightly silly about my decision to leave my station unattended earlier on the assumption that I wouldn't get pirated. <laughs> or Prussianed. Yeah. At least it's not a Prussian gang. Aww. Uh... I can't make out positively what they're in. 
If I had my uh, guide... Small wrinkle. Yeah? I can't join a combat order for a sixth or fifth rate mission because my ship is too wee. Really? I thought it was only a maximum. Uh, I wonder what I'm looking at here. Do you see a marker ahead of me? Yeah, that's not your combat marker. That's an open ah. thing, I think. That's someone else having started a seventh rate combat order. Let's see if I can fix this. Uh, I made a bit of a navigational error then. Bakonda says that that pressure was in a surprise, um, which I think sounds about right. I was certainly surprised. Womp womp. <laughs> I know. It's the, it's the easiest joke to make about that ship. And it's also true. I wasn't expecting to see the Prussians waiting for me at a random combat mission. Nobody expects the Prussian surprise? Or I'm not sure you like can that. say that on air. <laughs> Am I pulling away from you here? Uh, no, not much. I think we're about okay. Making uh, 25 knots with occasional bursts up to 40 for some reason because of floating point mm -hmm. errors. Um, one other thing I wanted to say is that uh, when I first heard that there was this redeemable today, the Diana... I was like, oh, is that the Russian Diana? Because there was a ship in the Russian uh, Imperial Navy called the Diana, and since the developers of the game are Russian, there are a lot of uh, things in this game that are sort of like, you know, the Russian Navy was never that much of a big thing, but I know you really like them. Um, but the Russian Diana actually was part of the Russian mission to Japan and sank there, uh, having run aground, I think. Maybe not the most auspicious ship to include that. Not auspicious, but what's actually really cool about it and why I bring it up is that the uh, Russians got a bunch of Japanese craftsmen to build a Western-style ship for them as a replacement, uh, named it after the city they were going to, Heda. And um, that was like one of the first uh, major bits of Western-style shipbuilding in Japan. Huh. It's like, hey, no, we, we ran aground. I expected the Japanese to go for it at that point in history. It was it was eighteen hundreds, um, mm -hmm. but you know, it was a little bit of like, hey, let's figure out how this works, and they rescued ship plans off of the Diana, so maybe that'll be useful. Oh, we're in combat. Hello. Surprise. Oh wait, we've already done that, Jeff. No, they're they're to the aft. Womp womp. All right. This is the first shakedown of the Diana that I've done. We are fighting a frigate. Um, You're right that it is a gorgeous ship, though. I can yeah. just looking off to my starboard side here. And I really like looking uh, up, I guess, against the sky highlights it more. But you can see all of the uh, the the sheets for controlling the yards up there, and the stays for maintaining the mask position. They're just Beautifully positioned. Now, yes, this is a large enough vessel that I will have to uh, turn off some broadsides. Yeah, I'm not fancying facing this thing. If you can chain it, I would appreciate that. Because just, you know, hitting it with a smaller cannon might not do as much, but wrecking the sails. I bring my double charge with me just for shits and grins. Yeah, sh right. That's actually a fair point. That'll probably help a lot. But I'm unlikely to be able to sink it single-handedly. Oh, yeah. For sure. Crew of 280 to your 130. Like, that's a pretty good indicator, too. Alright. I'm going to try chaining from the front here as soon as we come in range. Flying a Swedish flag. Oh, man. Looking at AI names reminds me. Um... I was just fighting the best uh, AI captain name I've encountered so far in this game, um, which is Benjamin Bravo. Holy moly, that is ideal. All right, bring this okay, down. Okay, I'm gonna peel to peel to Lee here. <laughs> Thank you for screening me. 
Ooh. Not all that broadside hit, but what did hit counted. You made a real mess of their stern. Yeah. Coming into aft here. Yep, I see ya. We're good. I'm gonna turn around. Let's see if I can drop a few more chain into their sails. So, um, my yeah, plan so the is to get some stern rakes in on them if I can. Uh, they're not quite taken aback, but they're not in a great maneuvering position. Yeah, well, I they're trying to get an think... angle on me here. Oh, there yeah. we go. I think that I put longs on this thing, which means my reload times are going to be bad, but I'm going to be heavy hitting. Ugh. That was the fault of the heel in some degree. Watching an entire broadside go bouncing off into the drink because I fired slightly too late. I did uh, end up hitting their masts a bit. Ooh. How you feeling? A little rough. I'm going to just see if I can get to the far side of you here. Yep, you're fine. You're fine. If we can, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. That feeling when the wrong deck fires. That did not do what I'd hoped. It's, uh, Slightly slow going on them. Need to maintain the weather gauge more. I'm trying to keep my bow pointed to them as much as possible just to minimize my profile. Yeah, that's probably smart there. They're getting surprisingly good hits on my structure right through Sorry, I can't hear a thing they're... you're saying over the cannon fire. Fair enough. <laughs> Broadsides were very loud in my ears. <laughs> um, they're managing to lob cannonballs over my armor here, which is mm. not what I really want in my life. That's unfortunate. On the other hand, I got a good stern rake in them. Check out their structure compared to the rest of them. Holy moly. Let's bring this around. Yeah, I think longs are the thing to have on this. Ooh. One solid hit on my stern. Otherwise, I'm doing pretty okay here. You're taking the beating. Um, yeah, I'm going to peel and see what I can do to get out of the line of fire for a bit. I've been outfitting um, carronades more. I think I might have put carronades on the bottom deck of this. I don't recall. Um, just because uh, I tend to rely on sort of sailing maneuverability. So... That makes carronades make a lot of sense, because I can get up close where they're really useful and just do the punching. And being on fire... I've had a wee emergency. <laughs> um, I have my crew on maximum firefighting duty here. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I will not be able to turn for a while. That fire looks unpleasant. So, something I learned uh, is that before a battle, sometimes they would wet their sails um, if the sails being on fire was a real concern. Like, obviously wet sails are slower and heavier to move and, you know, have tons of other difficulties about them. But, hey, soak your sails in water and keep them from catching on fire if, if that's the trade-off you need to make. I'm somewhat hoping that this fire goes out here fairly soon, because I'm starting to get a bit worried about my guns. Ooh. Yeah, if you need to break off, feel free. I mean... Oh, I'm already broken all the way off here. <laughs> I'm trying to cut in between him and you and take that fire. But... That does slow me down just a little bit as I turn.
All right, here we go. Time for a little bit of milling. Their side armor is already down further. That should give me some advantage. Their stern is completely gone, so if you can get behind them again, I think it'll make sure it'll work at their structure. Yeah. I do have the fire under control, finally. What? I do have the fire under control, finally. Oh, oh you do. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were asking if I didn't. I was like, I wasn't the one on fire. What? Huh? I can be uh, a little thick when focused on things like shooting ships. That is 22 solid hits. That's enough to make them a little unhappy. I'm definitely taking a little bit of a beating on that side, but I should have the advantage. One of the things that you see in some period naval battles uh, is that they would fight until they recognized that the other person had a higher rate of fire than they did. And like that was a cause to strike your colors, because what can you do if they're just getting out more broadsides than you can get out? Yeah, even with better sailing, they're going to pound you down. Right, unless you can get away, or unless like your broadsides just outclass them massively. It was kind of like, if you're more or less matched, you give up when you see that the other person's just shooting more cannonballs into you. Like I'm doing to Floris Robbins. You gonna try for a stern rake? Oh, you're nice and repaired. Uh, well, yeah, I'm coming in behind with a bunch of uh, chain shot to see if I can shorten this up a little bit. Good. I mean, you could also, if you think you have time to reload, uh, actually just do ball and, and hit them in the armorless stern. But it's up to you. Yeah, I don't really think that, unfortunately. Sure. Um, you're on fire. No, you're not on fire. Yeah, I'm still technically no, you on, are fire. on fire. I'm on fire. It won't last long. Reload those guns. Oh, More than half of that broadside went into the drink. I just uh, fired it right before a wave came in front and fired it a little bit low. So is it practical to go diving in the Caribbean with the express intent of finding loose cannonballs? I mean, what are you going to do? Carry them up to the surface again? No, just, you know, go see where they are, see if you can figure out where the battle likely happened. Oh, I mean, it probably is, yeah. Um, I imagine that a lot of them happen in deep enough water that you don't really want to be, like, running around in that. Well, maybe, I guess, yeah. Hmm. When you say diving, I, for some reason, assumed free diving, but you might have meant scuba. No, I would assume scuba. <laughs> I would this far from land. <laughs> All right. There isn't likely to be much worth free diving towards... And that is enough damage for now. Let's get ourselves out of their line of fire. Oh, that's another 10% off their sail. And let's move our yards all the way back. That should be enough to slow us down pretty good. And maybe, if I'm lucky, I will be able to loot them. Oh, they're sunk. I no longer need to drop fire into them. I just need to stay out of their line of fire. Yep, I mean, unless you want to get more XP by damaging them before they technically die. It's never good when you see a chain shot make that I have damaged armor animation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate.
There we go. Close enough to loot them. They have rig repairs. You want them? No, go for it. Cool. I'm okay. Well, shall we repair? Repair to so. Mortimer, as it were? To fix our ships. Yeah. So one of the things I was finding as I went over... Ooh, that is a nice pile of XP and stuff. Mm. Oh. One of the... How much did you get total? Uh, just around 10k gold and about 300 or 400 XP. Nice. Uh, one of the things I've discovered... Ooh, I'm gonna move a little bit more southeast first because that wind. Um, one of the things I discovered going through all of the ship uh, sail plans was that um, uh, there's a common pattern um, of having a an upper and lower topsail, um, but apparently that's actually a slight, slightly later thing than this period, and so none of the ships in this game have their topsail divided into upper and lower. Um, the sails on like a mast from the bottom, you've got the course, then you've got the topsail, then you've got the gallant, and on this you've got a royal. But often the topsail will have mm -hmm. two parts. Um, and there's a bit in uh, the second Aubrey Matron book where Captain Jack Aubrey ends up with a ship called the Polycrest that has two topsails. And everyone's like, isn't that a weird looking ship? I mean, it's weird for a lot of reasons, but that's one of them. And so in doing that research, I discovered that the split topsail is a more recent thing than this period. So whatever this eventually became, became perfectly is. normal, I take it. Yep, totally. So would those split topsails be handled separately or would they be treated as a single single still for the purpose of giving orders and things like you that? You know, I don't actually know. I imagine that uh, at least for like for reefing it, you would have do it separately right it would be like you know do we need the upper topsail do we need the lower topsail um but i don't know beyond that i mean that's what most of the orders are right like do you do you have the sail out or do you have it furled um so yeah i think they would be considered separate ones all right Attacking time. My goal here, having taken damage in that combat, is to get into the sea zone where we can't be attacked, and then do whatever to get into Mortimer. From um, there, it's basically a straight shot, even though the wind is once again on Yeah, even if we're in an awkward spot there, we should be fine. Um, the Prussian situation, you know, with them controlling. Do you know what this game needs, speaking what? of weather? Hurricanes. Yeah, so I mean, weather that can damage your ship seems like a contentious question, right? Maybe, but even just wildly changing local weather mm -hmm. to make navigation more complex. I've been and thinking to make battle, a whole, perhaps unwise. Well, I've been thinking a whole lot. Apparently, it used to have uh, battle instances with bad weather um, when the game was just battle instances and they didn't have like any open world stuff yet. Um. And that looked awesome from the YouTube stuff I saw. Um, Did they bring it back for Legends? You know, I don't know. I haven't tried it, so. But um, I've been thinking a lot about what it would uh, take to have a weather system that would, you know, be my perfect weather system. And uh, I was watching the clouds as I was sailing and thinking what you would really, really want is a weather system that would hint what's coming through sort of traditional sailor indications, right? Like you see the right kinds of clouds and you're like, oh, we're in for a storm or whatever, or red sky at night, sailor's delight, as we have right here. Mm -hmm. Or red sky at morning. And yeah, that take really morning. is a gorgeous sunset for sailing. Yeah. I mean, sailors take delight, or, or sailors delight just because you're looking at something beautiful as much as anything, right? True. <laughs> And because, uh, according to Lutus, because there's enough dust and something in the atmosphere that you're not going to have, what I don't know. He gave some explanation for it that I didn't totally buy. 
Oh, merciful capital zone. We're under the protection of the great guns of Mortimer Harbor. Who's this we, Kimosabe? Oh. <laughs> I'm under the protection of the Hello. great guns. Hello. I've never seen you here before. It's a pleasure oh. to meet you. To, you mind my speaking? Uh, my name in here is NASA, but in the game I'm Blackbeard. Ah, yes. I'm Mark Bonney. Um, I've been off and on with the clan for about a month and a bit here, but I have not online terribly often. Uh, Blackbeard, for the record, we're on stream right now, so say hi to the people if you want. Oh, hold on. Let me pull that up while I'm at it. What was that? I need to pull it up, pull the stream up while I'm at it. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, Mortimer. just coming into Mortimer. I was just trying out the Diana. You're Mortimer? Yeah, we're at Mortimer. I don't know how many ships at Mortimer. We can sail elsewhere. I've been wanting to Check. explore the Cuban coast a little bit more. I've been thinking about putting an outpost out there. That's risky, though. Well, yeah, but, you know. Chance to have some some PvP. Fortune favors the brave. I mean, if by fortune you mean repeatedly sunk ships, then yeah. Somebody's fortune favors the brave. <laughs> Possibly I'm the, the only one watching now. Yeah, there there was uh, the conda earlier. Um, a lot of the time, this ends up, you know, getting a little bit more uh, watches on YouTube. That seems to be where it's at. All right. Rig repairs, salt, and the all important. Holy crap! Why do you have that much stuff in your warehouse? Uh, because I've been building things. And collecting stuff from all of my um, uh, uh, construction buildings. You know the clan needs that fur log. Oh, sure. Are we low on it? Yeah. Here. I had I to go out and that. get an outpost at um, Madam, whatever it's called. Come on. Yeah. The iguana is where I have mine. Oh no, matter. I do have ships at. I hadn't heard from anyone that uh, we were short on anything, so it's just sitting yeah, on. Yeah, we ran short because you of want some of oak and some lignum vitae. Great. I think I'm good with that stuff. Surprisingly. Here. Send to chat. Hull repairs have gone up quite a bit. Send to clan warehouse. Yeah. Yeah, hull repairs. Oh yeah, people are. They're usually trying to get as just as much as they can out of that. All right, I'm gonna sit out in, out in the harbor. Halfway to unlocking the first knowledge slot on this thing. Hey. It's fast. Like it's incredibly fast. Yeah, I like it. I put a bovin lens on it, so it's even faster. Yeah, I had noticed. They're out pace even my usually bananas speed. What is the ship you are in, Blackbeard? Me? Yeah. Vasa? Oh, it's a Vasa, right. The one I can't build, so I haven't been sailing. Grumble grumble. It's got six it's got six bow chasers. That is beautiful and ridiculous. Yeah. It's like an entire cutter mounted on the front. Yeah. Look at that wheel. Oh, I'm zooming around inside your ship. I like my victory a lot more, though. I'm a, a little frustrated that in the open world they don't show the bow and stern chasers. Hey, Mark, is that the biggest ship you have? Um, for now, more or less, yes. I'm slightly short on the levels. I've got an Endymion and an Essex sitting in oh, port, and I just can't crew them. Which we will fix. Oh yeah, we can fix that quite easily. So, uh, speaking of fixing, did you money. grab any other uh, need missions need nearby? Needed. Will I even be able to enter them a third rate? No, you won't. Well, I mean, not unless we do a third rate mission and uh, sink the no, rest of us. We're not doing that, <laughs> 
looking for some open world stuff. There were uh, some Prussians running by here earlier too. Yeah, I just about sailed directly into one. All right. I'm going to follow you, Bonnie, wherever uh, you want to go, except you are zipping ahead of us. This I will be, slow down then. <laughs> might be fast, but not like tiny ship that size fast. <laughs> you were outpacing me on the way back in from the last battle. Yeah, I think I just had a better angle. Also, uh, Blackbeard, are you swapping out? Yes, because I don't really feel like using that ship if you guys are doing smaller ships than me. Yeah, yeah. We're sitting around fifth rate missions right now. In fifth rate mission? All right. Is that actually a tiny little island off to my starboard bow? It there? is. The that island must be really annoying to run aground on. Weird sort of like fog yeah. above them. Mm hmm. I think it's actually a contrast effect. Yeah. Which? I'm trying to get something. Where are they at? Where are they at? Where are they at? Which figurehead for um? Which one is this? Indefagable. Uh, what bow figure for an indie? Um. Yeah. Whoa! I did not run aground on that. Actually, I'm gonna get oh, a lion. Never spooky. mind. I'm gonna get lion. A lion? Yeah, that sounds like yeah. a good bet. Harder hitting is always nice. So yeah, I was trying to run aground on that little island, and uh, it is apparently like one square of shallows. So, harder than it looks. Oh, does anyone know where the uh, PvP mission is today? I ask mostly so we don't accidentally wander into it. Way off on the Mexican coast somewhere. Oh good, Tumbada or somewhere? Yeah, I believe it's Tumbada exactly, in fact. Oh, cool. <clears throat> I'm just waiting for Blackbeard to catch up here. I kind of wish that you had more fine-grained control over your sails, even on the open world. Just because, I mean, half of why I'm playing this is just for the, the sailing mechanics in Sim. But, like, this intensely Lee helm that I've got going on where most of my sails that are out are all in the front. Behind us, enemy AI third rate fleet. Too large, too medium. Behind? Yeah. Well, let's... Thoughts? Uh, what are you in? I'm in the Indefatigable. Indefati indefatigable? Uh, an Indy, a Diana, and a Rattlesnake against third rates, I'm not... Yeah, I'd rather not risk that. There's a bell pool in two smalls over there. We could uh, attack some shipping. Do some actual piracy. Bell pool? Yeah. Where? I'm headed straight towards it. It's about southwest. I see it. Yep, I see it. Yeah, let's go ruin their day. And their insurance rating. <laughs> this game really needs an insurance subsystem. That's what it needs. No, oh, then it really will be Eve Online. I know, right? <laughs> oh. I hear that there are some clans that have their own ad hoc insurance systems. Who would insure a ship in this game? They're all guaranteed to be sunk. I know, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the EVE one makes some sense because you're billed so frequently that you might actually, you know, pay more than your ship's value in insurance if you lucked out, but... Well, put it this way. You you will probably never have to pay for a ship again because of the mm. amount of stash of high rank ships we have because of me and I. <laughs> because That's you keep losing them? Kind of we have, like, eight Bologna's sitting in storage because we keep sinking them. <laughs> Seems fine. We have... Iron and I have a reputation. Iron has a reputation for losing ships. I have a reputation of catching on fire. I mean... Stop using open access battle. magazines and it will be but less of a... But they're issue. lovely! But I love it! This is what you get powder monkeys for. I have both. You pay... You, well, I say pay. 
I mean, you press very young boys into carrying around all your gunpowder for you. You are too close to combat. It didn't pull us into battle. Are you kidding me right now? It did not pull me in either. Oh, for Christ's sakes. You were too close to join me. That seems fine. I mean, I'm joining so now. <laughs> Whenever was, since when was that a thing? Um, so I found out that uh, powder monkeys uh, would often be as young as six years old. So having a bunch of six-year-olds running horrifying. around on your ship carrying all your gunpowder, in addition to like child labor considerations, it's just, that seems like a terrible idea in every way. I'm not used to having bow chasers. I keep forgetting to set them. So we've got a bell pool, a lynx, and a navy brig here. All right, bell pool's not a good captain that. named and a captain named Emilio Ironhook. Okay, that's that's a badass. Name. It's it's no Ben Bravo, but it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty ben damn Bravo. good. Ben Bravo was pretty good. Here's my problem in this, Diana. Heal. I don't like the size of this at all. I'm used to my. I missed my victory already. You're used to looking down on other ships. Yes, especially these little privates here. Especially these links. I don't like this. Well, I didn't get much successfully against Emilio, but I'm gonna try for something like an intercept course. And if I get it just right, a stern rake. I'm gonna go help Blackbeard out here. It looks yeah. like he's drawing the attention of a couple of other ships. I'm fine. An indie versus a I've, navy brig. I've held worse. Yeah. I've had worse. No worries there. I I can pull some crazy stuff off in this. Is harassing me though. Oh, this is bad. Let's bring her around. That was almost really, really bad. Hmm. Let's bring around and miss with almost the entire broadside. Yeah, I was angling down fairly heavily to avoid nailing you there. So, so was I. I was trying to. Well, well shot. You didn't hit me at all, and I don't think I hit you either. No, you didn't hit me. What the heck is with my? Why is my magazines red now? Uh, your magazines are red? Have you considered uh, urgent repair? Thanks, thanks. I've hit that multiple times. I think urgent repairs might be glitched today. I've had trouble getting them to actually go off. Yeah, like underneath leaks, it's on the bottom and my nav is gone. They finally fixed it. I don't get why that happened though. I've never had that issue. All right, I'm coming over to join you too because I don't want to be just duking it out with this bell pool. Oh wait, you does it ship on my right? What was that? Yeah, you've got company. I didn't, he's not even shooting me. I honestly had no idea this dude was here. If you can bait Mr. Iron Hook there. I'm I'm bringing him over. Taking a few shots to the stern in the process. I recognize that sound. Yeah, that bell pool's doing more okay than I would like it to be. That's not even hurt. Maybe I should have brought third or eight. I had a few shots, uh, a few broadsides that were just bouncing off the side because I was at that yeah. angle. Maybe so. I should have brought the third rate. Yep. 
we can sort this out. We just need to bring off some of those smaller ships here. Then we can focus on the bell pool. We're barely even doing damage to the links. <sighs> Getting a broadside on a small ship when you're in a fifth rate is still hard. I don't get why it's hard doing it in fifth rate. Yeah, I could do it in my first rate and wipe it out without an issue. Eh, it's just... It doesn't make sense. Uh, it's relative speeds and quantity of, of iron, right? Like, with the first rate, you have a bunch of stuff on your low decks right near the water, and a lot of them. So even just a few hitting is enough. Um, with the fifth rate, you can hit with a few and it won't really make a difference. You need to really hit with all of them. Like that. So Nibloom here is definitely falling apart. Yeah, I just put him into reload shock. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, one of my shells went through his back window and it took out like 10 of the crew. Let's bring this around. I'm a little frustrated that Iron Hook keeps hanging out, like, off to the side here. Not unless an issue for us. Well, the problem is he's pouring fire into the melee here. I hide behind his allies, then. Why are you firing chain shot off the bow chase? Um, because there's a guy in front of me with his sails, that's why. I, I get that, but... We don't really need to take his sails down. Cool, mind, four leaks on him. I really hate wind. Did you say you hate wind? Yeah, I'm stuck right now. Like the thing that makes these ships go? I'm stuck. And let's see how well the Diana tacks. The answer is very well. Wow. That's a strength. What are you testing? How well the Diana tacks. I mean, I've yeah, been it's... used to ships of the line lately because I've been in the Bologna's and the St. Pavel's a lot, but still. She, she turns on a dime. I have no idea what you just said because I fired a broadside and couldn't hear a single word, but she, yes, tax well. She turns, she, yeah, she turns on the dime. It's ridiculous. Captain Ironhook really is doing quite well out there, isn't he? Yeah, I'm just going to head back and make him come to us. Philip, however, is not. Philip. Nibble. Yeah, we really made a mess out of Nibelum's ship. Yeah, he's... he's hurt. Oh yeah, does not have long to live. One more good broadside and I think it's done for. E and I'm at full health. And full crew. Alright. My only issue is getting back up to where you guys are. Well, we're gonna bring them no, down to where you are. You. I mean, I don't yeah. look like... I mean, to. Bonnie, I would turn around, not just engage the bell pool if I were you. Don't worry, I had a plan. All right. It says everyone in this clan, and yet whenever we have a plan, it all, it all doesn't work. <laughs> well, I think that's we the problem. We each have a plan. We don't collectively have a plan. At um, one of my previous employers, my manager at the time was fond of saying that we had a very smart team. And privately, I repeatedly corrected them on that by saying that we had a lot of very smart people. Mm. 
That's an important because distinction, the team isn't it? Very obviously was an idiot. <laughs> Stop. Ship, please. So, again, one of the advantages of fighting the AI is that they will always choose to engage. And money. And money. Yes, that too. Many money. And harassment. How's uh, Nyblum doing? You've got that in He's the bag. He's dead. Yeah. He's fully dead. Like, he has nothing left. It, it's... It's like me, I can still see gunfire. That was and fine. Okay, he's shooting back a little bit, but I'm fine. There is some grim tiger tiger burning bright kind of beauty to the gunfire from these tall ships as the sun sets, etc. Let's see. Here we go, like if you want to loot him, you can. I can't turn around. Do you want someone I'm to loot him? I'm lined up on him, I'll I mean, grab it. If you want to. I mean, he's down, he's right there in your path anyways. It's going to be hard for me not to get there. Yeah, yeah, likewise. Hopefully we'll lure in the bell pool and the lynx. Do you have any sense whether the primary ship of an AI fleet carries better things than the other ships in it? No, I just looted it and didn't care. Cool. I don't have a sense of that either, but I was curious about it. So what's our plan when this tiny little fleet cat goes up with us? Uh, shoot Literally. them. That's our very good plan. And just not shoot each other. Oh, that wasn't part of really? my plan. Really? You're going for no, the loot there? Do not avenge iron. I already put a broadside into iron earlier because he stole my kill. <laughs> Hull repairs. That's what they got. Those are helpful. We actually kind of need those little pits. Yeah. I uh, built a whole bunch and brought them towards pit, so I might do that again with all of the iron and oak that I've got. Um, just is to... that what we had to escort? What is that what we escorted you for? No, actually. Unfortunately, those were returning empty because there ain't much in oh, Mortimer cool. to take. Um, but we next time. All the work. You did nothing. We chased off multiple fleets. Oh yeah, you you put so much effort into meeting me just outside the port. We we went a total of a hundred yards. Yeah, sail a hundred yards out, call it an escort day. The wind was horrible going in your direction. And I was sailing completely with it. Yeah, you were you had the wind with with you. We did not. It was horrible. Oh my goodness, I love tacking this ship. This is gorgeous. I know it's. It turns so fast. I think that the Boven Winds uh, refit gives you a, a jib and staysail bonus as well. It has to. So I'm probably doing has to. doing even a little bit better on that. Okay, we should leave him to the links and us to go double team Yes, that. that's my plan. Yeah. I just have to not hit... There we go. That was a beautiful, beautiful eking just by the Rattlesnake. Anyway, um... Yeah, I think I've got a refit on this that actually improves it even more for upwind sailing. Um, be great to like put a pirate yourself. refit on it or something at some point. What'd you build it out of? All right, and now they're exposing their damaged flank to you. And what, what did you put build your um Diana out of? Uh, Sabaku, Sabaku. I did take Teague. Yeah, you'd mentioned. I think that uh, it might be nice to have a slightly heavier one than the one I have, but I do like its speed and maneuverability. Oh, it's fast. Even with Teague, it's fast. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful ship. I'd love to learn more about it. You were saying it's uh, from a Spanish frigate? Okay, it was Dutch, but when Dutch sided with the oh. French during Napoleon era... UK well, seized the ship, gave it to Spain because Spain was invaded by France. Okay, right? let's Spain be clear. When the Dutch sided with, air quotes, like, <laughs> yeah. invaded by, yeah. 
I was gonna say, that's not exactly how yeah. they would describe it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that broadside's too high. The whole here. entire ship was commandeered. It was constantly passed around. I mean, yeah. And the last people that had it was Spain, and it went down to South America. Not South America, South Africa. South Africa. Mm. I'll have to read up on it. I'm not the only one in the stream anymore. <laughs> it's true, we have a few other folks here. Uh, no names are recognized right now, but hi, people. Hello. Humans. Presumed humans. Until we have evidence otherwise. Send the messages beginning with exclamation marks and see what happens. I think I'm just driving Enrique off of the fight. Here. I'm not really sure Where I'm accomplishing as much as I could be. I'm off to the starboard side. Yeah, I see ya. I see ya. Let's get that surgeon going. That probably would have been a good idea. Possibly. And I think that I'm gonna have to, um... Uh... Do a little repair run at some point. Oh. Oh, this be tight. Playing chicken. That's not chicken if you <laughs> Well, we were playing chicken and neither of us first. flinched. I was able to see both of your ships recoil from where I'm sitting. Wow, my shots barely missed the links. Ooh wee. Well now I can't shoot him though, because you're actually you know what? That's what you get for being there. I'm breaking off. You've got a clear shot. Do I have enough sailors to do everything that needs doing? Well, basically never. If I turn off a few of the gun crews, and if I turn off sailing, because we're fine lined up. Here's hoping. I think we've only killed one ship so far. Do you, uh, have plans to come join in this bit of fight, Blackbeard? I'm trying. I got stuck against the wind. Again. Don't want to get stern raked. That was a solid broadside. I'm actually pretty happy with that one. But I definitely need to break off for just a little bit. Give the gnomes if you can time bring, to repair. bring him down here, we can probably do some more damage to him. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Hmm? No He's rush. He's not at my beck and call. Stern. Um, Jelly. <laughs> Jelly. 
We're okay. We're tight. No, we're fine. We're not even going to be able to, like, reach across. Why do we always do this? I've gotten a lot better at paying attention to where my ship is at, so I'm, I'm much I've, more... We've had no choice. <laughs> That's fair. Speaking of which, Mark, have you actually played with the, when the rest of the fleet, most of the fleets online? Up no, the not so much. So, get used to this fact now. Be aware of your surroundings and where the other teammates are. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I've definitely had some bumper cars moments. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, there's plenty of that. Plenty of that, and if someone steals your kill, if you steal someone's kill, you're likely to get shot. But the only issue is, if you come, if you go up to pits, which is where we usually hang out at, you will end up running into all of where our first rates sit, and we can't drive in fifth rates. So, <laughs> the yeah. first rates barely move, so they're kind of like islands from my perspective. Yeah, yeah I mean, when you're in a small vessel, it's a lot we, easier to get around the first rate. A, it's when all the first rates hit each hit other. <laughs> that was a while ago. We have not done that since. You say Dare that. I now. ask. We ended up playing a bunch of bumper cars with like four first rates. <laughs> yeah, bumper cars. Well, then nice part is if you get them all rammed together like that, you can just kind of move as a unit really easily. No. <laughs> we all kept trying to go the same direction and it just didn't It's work. like a line formation. It's just all the ships are physically connected to each other by their spars interlocking. Do you think the most effective formation for a naval battle is a clump? <laughs> for us, we don't have a plan. We've never reached the ability to where we can execute a plan and have it work. There we go. That's some um, nice hits on the links. Thank you for peeling Enrique off me. What? Oh, I just said thank you for peeling Enrique off me. I'm right here next to you. Yeah, I peeled Elijah off oh, you, if really? that's what you mean. But to say, I'm right here. I have made some errors. Oh, yeah, you have made some terrible errors. <laughs> well, so much for my bowel spread. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, did you two just crash into each other? No! no worse, worse than that. Did you just crash into the enemy? <laughs> I it, did. While I sure, was sure looks like that. Oh boy. He did it while I was shooting. I, took I out came out surprisingly out. okay. I was the one that shot your bow spread. No, the bow spread snapped off when I collided with um, it Iron It gave me Iron the credit, Knight. that's what I'm saying! Oh, really? Yes. Wow, no, I, I thought I just bonked it off on the side of his hull. No, no you hit his hull, it caused your bow spread damage. One of Blackbeard's cannonballs severed your bow spread. He got credit. Clean. Is it still the case that uh, Friendly Fire gives you negative XP? I don't know, I'll find out. I think it was. I'm running right up alongside this Lynx, trying to maintain pace with it as best I can, because broadside to broadside, it's clear who wins. Let's see if I brought along a spare bows for it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you say that like I value them. <laughs> I think I actually stand a chance of successfully looting this lynx. Uh oh. If it will actually sink. Oh, at least I'm in good company. You've just <laughs> you've just sailed basically over top of the bell pool. Wait, how much over the top? What are you guys doing uh, there? Bell pool healed over a good 10 degrees when you hit it. Don't worry about what we're doing. I'm being me. I'm doing what I always do. Don't question it. 
Trust us, we're professionals. I'm gonna sail up on the other side, please don't shoot oh, me. Crap, that hurt. Oh hey, I got credit for uh, Elijah Enrique. Yeah, whoever really? does the most damage to it gets credit for the kill. I did a ton of damage to that Lynx. Okay, yeah. we need to go back to Mortimer and repair after this, because I am hurting. Oh, I'm in good shape. All I need to do is replace my passport. <laughs> All, in air quotes. I'm, oh, I'm just going to dangle a couple of sailors off the front here and hope for the best. I mean, that's what they're paid for, right? Paid. Yeah, in the case of pirates, paid in the promise of a share. So, um, there's this wonderful YouTube channel called Townsend's, uh -oh. and they do a lot of stuff about, like, uh, colonial era. Like, it started with cooking, and now it's into just, like, general life. They've been, like, doing some building and, like, all kinds of stuff. And... Hug. Group hug. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Anyway, um, on Townsend's recently, they did a live stream with this, this one guy. That's why we can't have nice things. Yeah. Townsend's. The, yeah, yeah. This one guy who um, has done a bunch of reenactment uh, as part of a sailor in the Virginia State Navy uh, around colonial era, whatnot. Um, and it was really interesting hearing him talk about it and talk about Navy things and about, you know, the cannon they had and firing it. It was a three pounder, which by the scale of this game is like nothing, but, you know. Still, black powder cannon. Still, still a gun. Yeah, um, as he pointed out, black powder. Do not put smokeless powder in a black powder gun. Not if you want to keep the gun. <laughs> yeah, um, but. Uh, hey, um, Mark, mind moving? I'll see what I can do. I was hoping to get one more broadside off before I oh, did that, man. but no. Yeah, yeah, you can see my sails going up. It's uh, interesting watching this from a distance as I try and get there. Oh, so we both look like idiots from your perspective. Yeah, I'm going to oh, do the uh, uh, movie mode thing where I make the camera be free and float over to you and see what it would look like from a cinematographic point of view. Oh, Ironhook's dead. You've got this. Yeah, I just, I just killed him. Uh, I guess one of you should loot him. It's up wind. You're the only one that can. Wow. That's fascinating. What? Um, on the bell pool, the spanker on the mizzen has a spar like it's supposed to be a lateen, but the sail doesn't go all the way down the spar. Not what I would have expected. That is really weird. Y'all got this under... Oh, he's not actually sunk yet. Never mind. <clears throat> there goes a mast. I did a thing. <laughs> I did a thing. Uh, anyway, so the reason I bring up this Townsend's bit is um, that uh, one of the questions that... Uh, this... How did he get it? Because <laughs> I did the most damage. Um, anyway, so they were asking this guy about, uh, like, privateers versus Navy, and, uh, you know, the Navy could impress people, uh, but were privateers ever lacking for crew? And the answer was no. Uh, they got a share, so there were always people willing to sort of jump on and be like, yeah, I'll take a chunk of money, or the chance at money, in exchange for, you know, threatening life and limb. Uh, I was going to say, that seems more like an opportunity for risk than an opportunity for reward to me. Yeah, but, you know, when you have the brutal uh, um, financial regime of that period, I suppose it made sense for some people. Um, I'm going to see if I can slow down enough to loot this. I wouldn't sit there if I were you. Well, stop shooting it. But I want the mass. No, stop shooting it. I'm going to loot but, it. But. Longs. Had long nines on it. All yours. I'm going to head back into Mortimer and repair. Yeah, I need to head back to Mortimer too. I'm switching ship. I'll meet, I'll meet you two there. Ooh, 40,000 gold and another 350 XP. Nice. How much more do you level up? I will tell you. 
I need another 3,000 and a change. I'm getting a bigger ship. All right, so I think that Mortimer was like more or less northeast from where we were. It's, yeah, that. it's slightly north of northeast. I happen to have been a beeline for it, so would I'll you say you northeast by north? I where would not you? after that conversation we had. <laughs> There's Rochelio. Where are you? I'm in port. I made it all the way back to Mortimer already. What'd you do? Fly? <laughs> steady, <laughs> steady thirty knots. Yes. The scale at which the open world works just baffles me. Like the idea of a sailing vessel going thirty knots is actually terrifying. There's a lot of pirate AI fleets around here. I mean, what's the world record? Like fastest sailing vessel is something like a sustained speed of forty-five knots into the wind. Modern naval or sailing naval? Modern. I think it's way over that. Uh, for a sailing vessel? The three most sought after records are this. Oh, hang on. On, let's see. The 500 meter record is held by Paul Larson, 2012, sailing at 65.45 knots in 65. Namibia. 65? Oh, wow. Where was for that? For a whole half, half kilometer in Walvis Bay, Namibia. Wow. Oh, that's, like, known for high winds, too, isn't it? Yes, rather. Yeah. Uh, the nautical mile record is 55.32 knots, also at the same bay. And the 24-hour record is 37.84 knots. Okay, I guess and, I was averaging 24-hour uh, and, and uh, nautical mile, apparently. 65 yeah, is an absolute banana fast. speed. I'm grabbing my balloon. I'm grabbing yeah. my balloon, so. I would not feel very comfortable on a sailing vessel at 65 knots. <laughs> I've seen what those things do. Neither would I. Yeah. They come so, out of the water. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, there's, they're achieving that speed because they're at almost zero uh, drag from the water, right? Like, they Ref are... Refresh my memory here. Hang gliding on. on it. Is it, not, is, it not, is it nautical mile one arc second or one arc minute? Don't ask me. Nautical miles and nautical mile to me. Don't ask me. I can use another. I can grab another ship. It's one arc minute, so let's go. That that guy's going along at a degree per hour. Wow, that'll eat up globe for you. All right, <laughs> with that, we've been going for a good bit. Um, I'm going to uh, end the stream here, but thank you both for joining me. And uh, it's been a pleasure. We'll do this again next week.